Join us as we head into the backwoods of Alabama in search of valuable antique treasures that were left behind over a century ago. Let's go see what we can find. So this is the creek, if you guys have been around the channel for a little while, that produced that amazing jug I found that was stamped recently. All right, I got it loose. I haven't been able to tell if the handle's there yet, so we're gonna do the reveal together. It's early. Oh, crap. That root is just making it so difficult. Oh, I feel the handle. Oh, that's an early one, guys. Holy mackerel. Look at that. Look at the top on it. Oh, it is stenciled. Oh, heck yeah. W.T. William right there. Yes. <laughs> and yes, I am using this stick to wave away all of the spider webs that are crossing this creek because this is a narrow creek. And this spot has actually produced a lot of antique bottles, even though it's small. Some of the most valuable bottles we found on the channel has actually came out of here. So I am hopeful that we're gonna find something cool today. I'll turn the camera back on when I see something interesting. So first bottle of the day is right here. And it's gonna be a modern beer. That's all right, doesn't belong in here, let's get it out. I've told y'all this a million times, if you're seeing, pieces of leather shoe soles usually you're in a good location and it looks like just so happens there's going to be two pieces of shoes right here here's another one all within just feet of each other so a lot of people want to know why the glass ended up in the creek like it did well this town dumped their privies into this creek there is a more modern ketchup i'm going to set some stuff down right here to pick up on the way back but right here is why i turned the camera on Look at that jar right there. I wonder if the thing's gonna be whole. Oh yeah, look at that, guys. Look at that. Atlas Strong Shoulder Mason. Holy cow. That's a nice one. It doesn't have a ground lip, so I'd say this is probably, and I'm not a jar, guys, so y'all feel free to correct me. But if I had to guess, this one right here is gonna be right around the turn of the century, right around 1900 super cool jar and we will take that not a bad first good find of the day before i put it in the backpack i did go ahead and rinse the dirt off and take a look at the air bubbles in it those are awesome i love seeing those old air bubbles guys and that thing is in fantastic condition holy cow all right i gotta keep going i'm distracted by the jar and i know there's gonna be good stuff let's keep going it definitely looks like all the rain we had has changed this place up immensely over here, this did not used to be as wide as it is now. I guess, and I'm guessing that the trees and tires created a dam which allowed the bank to wash over to the left, which means a lot of the stuff over here should be newer. However, I'm racing the rain today. I know you guys can't tell, but there's a very good possibility that I'm gonna get soaked here in a minute. So I got a couple things right here. I raked this with my rake and it felt solid, so I decided to pull it out on camera. Okay, that's going to be a little bit more modern than what we're looking for. But right here is cork top. It's an unembossed cork top, but it is cork top. So we're on the right trail. Put these right here and grab them as we're heading out. What do y'all think this thing is? At first I thought it was a mailbox post. But I don't know. That's a big old bolt in it. Definitely been carved where it could be stuck into the ground. I have no clue what it may be. Comb anyone? It's only missing a few teeth. And y'all better not have any Alabama jokes for that. <laughs> it's really just a toss up here whether you get a screw top or a cork top. There's a little screw top. Nothing on this one. On the bottom it's got a 36. That's probably the year it was made. Lots of cork top pieces, but since that jar it's been a little slow. Got a long ways to go, guys. I think we're starting to get into that 1870s stuff right here, guys. Look at that top. Holy moly. Lots of glass right down here right now. Trying to keep my eyes open, make sure I'm not missing anything. That's a more modern soda, it looks like. Lots and lots of glass to peer through, though. That's why these creeks continue to produce is because you're gonna miss something. It doesn't matter who you are. You're gonna miss something or it's gonna be just below the sand and the next rain will wash it out. This looks to be a good bit more modern, but it looks like a dead shot right there, which would have been like for poison. Let's just see. 
Yep, fly dead. F L Y D E D. That's cool. It's a little bit newer, but it's definitely a keeper, guys. Anything that has to do with old pesticides is usually fairly collectible. Got a little shoe polish, it looks like, right here. Unembossed. Would have had like a press top on it. You can tell by the way that it's shaped. Still a cool little keeper. I kid y'all not. This is exactly how it was sitting. <laughs> Got a nice little amber stopper. That's hilarious. A lot of people don't know this, but these had a little rub rubber grommet or washer that would have went around it. So when it pressed in, it acted like a cork for the bottle. It didn't just sit on top. It was actually held in place by that rubber. This looks like one of those little Penzlar bottles that we dig. But it's a screw top. So I'd say that's probably 1930s. It doesn't say Penzlar or perfume or anything on the sides. It's still a pretty bottle though. Looks like the bank's exposed a couple of things right here. Looks like that's going to be a cork top, but I can't tell if it's going to be embossed. Oh, it is a cork top. Sadly, it is going to be unembossed. We've got a nice whiskey though. Take a look right down here. Oh. Been a press top again. Looks like that's 1930s or 40s. Not quite as old as that mason jar in the beginning. We gotta start finding some of that older stuff. Got another one right here. Looks like a Whitmore shoe polish, maybe. It's a different shaped bottle. Thought it was gonna be square, and it's not. Oh, I got a big flash right there. It says Hershey's. So just H-I-R-S-C-H. No clue on that one, guys. Another one I have to do research on. Guys, anybody that tells you that creek hunting is easier than bottle digging has some truth if they're in a big creek. But look at this small creek right here, and then look how sweat-covered I am. I'm talking about I am drenched from head to toe. It's just so hot, it's unbearable. I'm to the point now where I just need to be diving. Good Lord, it's hot. All right, let's see something that looks promising. Well, maybe two somethings. If you look, there's a flask right there. And then right here, let's get it out first. It's probably just a beer. And it is. That's an older one, it looks like. Now let's look at the flask. The flask is what caught my attention. Be embossed. Oh, it is embossed, but it's not a town. You see, honest measure, full half pint. Let's see if I can get where you guys can see it better. Maybe right there little blank circle slug right there would have had a paper label in it with a town and that one hurts my feelings take a look right here i've got a neck of something sticking out can't tell if it's going to be a modern beer or not yet let's dig around and see what it is it wasn't a modern beer but it's fairly modern acl dr pepper or applied color label i was hoping for something much older but it's better than the beer that i thought it was going to be take a look right here Oh, another beer. It is oldie though. It's a couple of beers so far. So I'm up on the bank right now going around some logs. And literally that was on the surface. Another stopper. I see a mason jar lid. Right there. And another piece of amber glass. That looks older too. This may be a good spot to come back and poke around in the bank some. So we started the morning looking for glass in the water and we did okay. We found a few things, but it wasn't producing a ton of stuff. My buddy Peyton has discovered a new bottle dump that he has invited us to to come check out. He's been digging there for several months. It has produced a ton of straight sides and hutches. So we're about to go check that out as a crew right now. It's so hot though. I don't know how long we're gonna be able to hang in there. So hopefully we'll find a few bottles for you guys at this new location. Let's go check it out now. So first bottle at the new spot. It's gonna say Tennessee right here. And it looks like it may say distiller, so it may be a whiskey. Probably Nelson. Think so. I think so. We do got Clayton and Randy with me today, and uh, we're just gonna take our time getting this one out right here. Here we go. Oh, it's whole. Yeah, you were right. That's a nice one. I've never dug one of those. Chaz Nelson Distiller, Nashville, Tennessee. That distillery was actually in Greenbrier, Tennessee, which is really? 30, 30 miles north of Nashville. But he didn't put Greenbrier on it for some reason, he put Nashville. 
Huh. Probably because Nashville's a bigger town, more recognizable. Or... Distributed there, my guess. That's cool. That's a good first bottle. Heck yeah. All right, check it out right there. Soda. Most of the sodas in here do have damage. We're not sure if it was a bottler or if this was a neighborhood dump. This one's a little different. Oh, uh, flip sheared. It is just one of the big property ofs. Let's see if I can wipe it off where you guys can see it. These are still tough bottles. Property of the Birmingham Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Still get whiskey glass. We'll take it. I wish the top would have been on it though. It's Clayton's turn down in the hole. Here he goes. That's stuff that sat in the sun for a long time. What was that one? Another standard. He's got a good layer going right there. You see one with a sheared neck right there. Stuff is very weird. Here it comes. Found all the bottles on the side of the road and he set them out there in the sand in the sun and turn them. Oh yeah. And, and, and turn them colors. Is that a Birmingham? Yep. Birmingham straight side Coke. That one's different. That's a root 14. They're usually root 13. That one's got a little bit thinner text. Oh, and it's, it's a it's shoulder. It's a different year. It's not a different mold number. It's a root 404 like most of them are. Dang. That glass just does not hold up though. Nope. This is a stinky dump site too. Like you can tell it when you get like the gunpowder. It does smell like gunpowder. It kind of makes you a little worried. It's oh, <laughs> something. Okay, <far> <laughs> so there's another one right back there. Oh, is that a cup? Oh, that's pretty. That's it does look like it's whole. That's a pretty little jar. That's wild. That's different. Look at that thing. Very decorative with like a floral. No, that's not floral. That's just decorative, it looks like. That's cool. I thought it might have been like a teacup, but there's no handle mark, so I guess it is whole. I don't think it could have been better if it was full of silver coins. <laughs> could be a cream you got a whole one? Oh, it's a ketchup. I know you guys have seen us dig a thousand of these bottles in the past, but they're a blast. This is a, another straight side Coke shoulder script. These bottles right here in phenomenal condition only bring about 35 to 45 dollars a piece and that's just because there are so many not because of the age i mean this thing's around 19 what 12 14 clayton yeah. Yeah. i mean you're still talking about a 100 110 year old bottle but they're not incredibly valuable but they're fun things to dig i will tell you that Any so bottle is a fun bottle to dig besides the ketchup yeah you're now you're right ketchups are <laughs> not fun <laughs> all right guys we are back home. We're about to clean these bottles up. I just rinsed all of the sand out of these. It looks like it's gonna have some wonderful air bubbles in it based off of what I'm seeing. I see something right here that I can't tell if that's gonna be a crack or if that's just an, a very long air bubble. We're gonna dip it together real quick and see. The dead shot or the fly dead turned out great after I rinsed it out. I was actually really shocked how clean it came out. And the mason jar's got a little bit of creek grime up around the top, but overall it's not very scratched up or anything. So we get questions every week about how we clean our bottles. Usually we tumble them, but for these right here, they look like they're gonna be okay after a quick dip in muriatic acid. So I've got a five gallon bucket right here that is non-diluted, straight muriatic acid that you buy at Home Depot, like $14. This stuff will etch concrete if you get it on it. Ask me how I know. And it is not good to get on your skin at all. So if you mess with this stuff, be sure that you get on the proper safety gear such as rubber gloves, safety glasses, and honestly, this stuff lets off a pretty nasty smoke if it's a really grimy bottle. So move it outside, do it outside in the open air, and just be safe. I'm gonna show you guys these bottles in just a second after I dip them. First up out of the acid bath is the awesome Atlas Strong Shoulder Mason. We do not find a ton of these guys, so this was absolutely a pleasure to find. The air bubbles stick out, and if you can't tell, that creek grime that was all up around the top is completely gone after literally just sticking it in the muriatic acid for about a minute, then taking it out, rinsing it off with a toothbrush, all the creek grime went right away. Next up is that Honest Measure full half pint. And look how beautiful this thing turned out, guys. You just saw how nasty it was. And this was not a crack up here. That is a long air bubble that comes down in through the neck, which is neat. Big air bubble in the side right there on the strap. Nice one in the slug. So there again, that muriatic acid can work wonders. Just be very, very careful with it. If you guys enjoyed today's adventure, be sure that you're subscribed or you don't miss our future ones, and we will catch you guys in next week's video.